All right, everybody. So what we're doing now, if you look at the standards, we're kind of like in standard six, seven. Do I got me on that? The back end of six and the beginning of standard seven. And what I'm going to do is really kind of cover over, um, well, it's called arrow good feeling. So let's just kind of really lead up to everything. So as we go through this, this is the worksheet, like I said, y'all gonna be following. Just make sure you pay attention, you'll be good to go, okay? Now, if you look here, this is also in CTLS. If you click that link, are you scanning this QR code? This Prezi will come up. Y'all with me so far? Okay. So let me show you about how many of y'all have used Prezi before? I think I gave you one, but have anybody ever used it before? Nope. All right. So you got a couple ways. You can hit this button here, which is what I would do. But if you scroll up, here's everything right here. Do I follow me on that? So you have a pick which way to go. We good? Okay. And now you're also going to have this video to start with as well. So. This is basically the United States post um, 1812, and that's where our focus point is going to be. So, area of good feeling. That same page I just showed on the screen. And again, if you got your flashcards, just keep them out. I'm gonna come around, just checking that off. All right. So, the area of good I just said like five times. The area of what? Good. good. What? What's the blank? Start with F. I just said it like two, three times. Feeling. Air of good feeling. Okay. So now, why is this air of good feeling? What war just ended? War yeah, War of 1812. And did we win or did we lose? It was technically a stalemate, but in the eyes of the United States, we won. So we won that war. And hopefully, if you're paying attention, you see what I'm telling you to fill in the notes at, right? All right. Um, National pride and morale. So I'll put both pride and morale. It's going to be at the highest there is. It is being developed. So we this is when we get the thing called the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Y'all know what Cali Kaepernick did, right? He nailed doing the Star Spangled Banner. So this was written at that time. We also have something to keep in mind about the War of 1812. Kind of like what Christian just said. And again, I hope you guys are listening to me because if you look at this is in the sense that we didn't win the war necessarily, but it was a stalemate, but we didn't lose it. Does everybody got me on that? And a lot of people call it the second American Revolution. Did everybody follow? Because again, we fought against Britain again. And we still had a background in the War of 1812 at this point. <clears throat> is everybody with me? Okay. All right, so um we start having the internal improvements. Uh, we started building more roads and canals. Does everybody know what a canal is? What's a canal? Somebody explain to me what a canal is. Yeah, like a waterway, right? Yeah. So it's like, so it's not the Chattanooga River. Is that I got me on that? But some people might confuse it as such. Well, yeah, this is when they started to build them, but not quite yet. It's about to come up. Because again, keep this in mind, we're leading into the American, not the American Revolution, but the American Civil War. And railroads will be huge. Is everybody clear there? Like the industrial this is the first industrial revolution right now. Yeah. So we start building roads and canals. Okay. Is everybody with me? And something I want to show you about the Prezies is that you see how I got my cursor here? It tells you the slide. Is everybody got me on that? So keep that in mind because I'm going to stop at a certain point, right? Y'all have to pick up. So this is how you can go directly to that slide. Everybody with me? All right. So now we're officially going to be on slide five because you can see what's about building roads, canals, right? And here's what I'm saying. Make sure y'all listen to me. Also follow along here. Um, we also now have two. We have this big issue with the tariffs. Now, you can't remember what it, can't forget what the tariffs is because this is now 2023 and we're still dealing with tariffs. What is a tariff? What does it do? Why is it going to be a bad thing for us? Huh? Say it a little bit louder. Don't be worried about being wrong. Just say it. Yeah, what are tariffs? Yeah, they, it's a higher tax on goods not made in the United States in this case. Does everybody got me on that? So for right now, 2023, we have tariffs against China. So everything that we normally buy from China, which is everything, again, this is recent inflation, we pay more on now. Is everybody clear there? The idea of a tariff is to try to, to switch people to buy more American than buying foreign goods. Is everybody clear there? Which is good. If you think about it, except when everything's made in China, it doesn't work right now for us. And again, y'all all see that because everything's made and everything costs more money, right? 
How many of y'all pay for your own cell phone bill? Okay, so two of you understand this, but if you notice over the last two years, it went up and up and up and up. Again, because a lot of that technology is coming from China. All right, y'all good here? All right, so now we have two political parties. What is the first, what is one party? Federalist. Federalist. So yes, the Federalist Party is gone after the War of 1812. They're going bye-bye because they mainly opposed the war. Everybody got me on that? Is everybody clear there? Is everybody following me on the notes now too? So the War of 1812, you had the Federalist Party is gone after 1812 because they opposed the war. So now we have two other parties. You had a Democratic Party still is around from 1808 to 1812. Who's the leader of that one? James Madison, okay? And then, the, and then from 1816 to 1820, who was the leader? James Monroe. Now, can anybody help me? What present numbers are those? What presidents are they? Numbers in the top five? Four and five, yes. So you have Madison is president number four. Make a side note of that. And you have Monroe, who's president number five. Is everybody with me? You with me, clap once? Okay, you're listening. Dominant party. No, no. No, no. They oppose the war. Oh, oh. Oppose the war. They oppose the war. Okay. So now we kind of got past that. Now we got, it's a growing nation. Is that right? Got me on that? By 1830, there are how many people live in the United States? 12 million. So by eight, that's a lot of people. Do y'all see that? It's a lot of people. By 1830, there's roughly 12 million people um, live in the United States. And how many states are there? 24 states. 24 states. So now we have grown from 13 to now we have a total of 24 states. So the America is growing west, and a lot of that is because of Manifest Destiny, the idea that we have the God-given right to move further west. Is everybody with me on that? You all with me? Okay. So now, let's, let's kind of get more. So now the causes you have... Not really immigration for now, but you got more children born. So keep people having more kids, right? Um, you also have high infants. So the reason people have so many kids is because kids are dying off quickly. So to kind of combat that, let's pop out more babies. And I'm saying it kind of loosely. Again, it's kind of sick, so I have no kind of filter at all. But you, it makes sense. If I'm constantly, if kids are constantly dying, how do I fix it? Have more kids. Do I got me on that? Now keep in mind, pregnancy is still very much a traumatic experience. Do I got me on that? But medicine is kind of not there yet, but it's, it's, it's getting better. Is everybody clear on that? So that's the issue. You also have a low medium age, meaning um, most of the population was very young. So in 1820, most of the population is under 17 years old. That means they're babies. Is everybody clear there? But these are the same ones about to fight the Civil War because of that age. Are you following me so far? Y'all with me? Okay. All right, so now most young couples deem for, for working hard to make a good future for their families. Because the idea is that if I work hard, I make money, I make a stable community, community and we're going to do better. I eat the American dream, if you want to say it from that sense, okay? Is everybody with me? Okay. All right, so let's get to the Industrial Revolution. So the first thing I want to talk about is going to be transportation and revolution. This is a good crash course. If you go to Crash Course US History, for Industrial Revolution, that's a really good one. So if you have any issues here, or if I quiz you and test you know so well, this might be a good video for the watch. For the sake of time, I'm going to skip this video. Y'all cool with that? Hi, I'm John. And I can show y'all how to slow down the videos. It's very easy. I'll show you how to slow down videos on YouTube because I know John Green talks hella fast, right? But you can slow down him to where you can understand a little bit better, okay? Hmm? Okay. All right, so transportation. So by the 1830s, we already said there's 12 million people. Now, the first thing we got is steam power. Who creates steam power? James Watt. James Watt um, used the steam engine to make what? Textiles. textiles. What's a textile, y'all? It's like clothes. Clothes. You can do it for like, you know, like paper. Like anything. That you, those are all different things you can use for textiles. That's all correct. All right. Now, Robert Fulton... He used steam power for what though? Ship. For ships. So we don't have airplanes yet, do we? Y'all do know that most of our goods still come on ships. Did y'all know that? 
if you didn't know, you pay any attention after 2020, how we had, you remember we had very few things on the, on the shelves, right? It wasn't because planes wasn't working. It was no one's undertaking, taking the goods off the ships. So here we are in the 1830s in 2023, we are still using ships. They right clear there? All right. Y'all good? Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the roads. Um, they used to move goods, also to migrate west, and also communicate and run the government. So the roads are the main ways we communicate. Even now, we still use that, right? Is I-85, 75 ever not packed? Yes, yeah, ever not packed? No. No, in Atlanta, like downtown Atlanta, I-85, 75, right down that downtown, is it ever not packed? No, because that means we're still using those roads to get, uh, get around. Is that what got me on that? All right. So we also have uh, federal and national roads. So like the I, whatever is on federal roads, right? But y'all know how like um, Kyle Parkway, I forget what number is that? Highway number? 35. It's not an interstate though, is it? That's more of a local road. Is it right clear there? So that means it's funded differently. So our national roads be like I-75, I-85, I-20. Those are roads that take you across the country. Is everybody clear on that? All right. Um, so you have now these national roads, they built to last and they financed by who? Who financed these um, roads? The federal government, right? Who's the federal government? This will be good for y'all to remember when y'all get the government, because I'm teaching government, so I'll make sure y'all know this too. You have, you have local, state, and federal. Who's the federal? Oh, that's like Congress. Yeah, that's Congress, the president. You know, y'all money is federal money, right? Y'all banking accounts, those are federal accounts. You see everybody clear there? We're in a state school, is everybody clear? Run by county funds, local. Is everybody got me on that? Does that make sense? So it's a whole big bureaucracy about how these work. You gotta make sure you remember that, especially every, how many of y'all wanna open a business? How many people got a business? Okay, so no one wants to be an entrepreneur. If you wanna be an entrepreneur, you need to know these levels because it dictates how you get your money and also the taxes you pay, okay? All right. Um, so one example of a road, talk about Route 40, is from Maryland to where, y'all? Ohio, that's old Route 40. So that's a goes pretty long if you think about it from that time period for 24 states. They right clear there? We good? All right. Questions so far? Any questions? All right, let's get more into these canals now. All right, so we said the two main ways of transportation were both roads and canals, right? Now you got the canals. So water was the cheapest way to carry goods but they didn't go everywhere, so people had to build canals. That makes sense, right? Does water go everywhere you want to go? No, and what humans do, for better or for worse, we build things to make the water work the way we want it to work. Have I got me on that? How many of you have been in New Orleans? Okay. You know, New Orleans is not a place you should live, but because of the different things we did to kind of monitor how the water is used, people can live there. But anybody know if it, if it rains for two hours, it's flooding in New Orleans. It's literally below sea level, and it's not meant to live there. But, you know, we make it work. So I shouldn't be seeing any kind of computers up because, that you know, y'all should be just totally listening to me. I want y'all to write this down. What'd you say? Yeah, Lake Pocket, Pocket, Pocket Train. Yeah, it's right there. It's a beautiful bridge and water scene, but it just reminds you of just how much it's, like, it's flooded. Like, that whole area, it's, they call them swamps for a reason. That's just waterways. Y'all right? Y'all follow me on that? So it's not the same thing. All right. And hopefully I see y'all still kind of working forward. So what's the definition of a canal? An artificial, that's the key word I'm using. Key vocabulary I'm using is artificial waterway, right? And then mostly in the Northeast, you do have some in other areas. Erie Canal is the most used and the most biggest one we will talk about right now in this time period is the Erie Canal. And it connects the Hudson River to the what lake? The Erie Lake. Now, if you think about the Erie Lake, that's over where Michigan is, Illinois. Is that right, got me on that? That's a big waterway. That connects the that connects the Atlantic Ocean to not only the um the Great Lakes, but also now the Mississippi River, because the Mississippi River is up there too. Is that right, got me on that? So that means you have everybody connected. Is that right, clear there? Because you know you can break stuff up through the Gulf of Mexico. Now you can break stuff to the Atlantic. We still use this as well. Has anyone ever been like say Memphis, Tennessee, or anywhere on the on the Mississippi River? You still see little ships going down that, that lake, right? Or that river, because they still shipping stuff. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So they connected the uh, Hudson River to the Erie Canal. 
also connected, like I just said, the Atlantic Ocean um, to the Great Lakes. Now, it cuts transportation costs by how much, y'all? 95%. That's a lot of money, ain't it? Y'all remember we was talking? Oh, well, y'all ain't got there. Well, we're going to talk about um, the Panama Canal later. Like, anything that costs, anything that can cut costs of shipping is a good thing for you as a consumer. Because as y'all know, we pay more now for things, right? Because we don't have stuff available. So you want that, cut, that cost to be cut. That way, it, we actually pay less money. Now, it also increased uh, rate of stealth. Development and development of all the lake regions, meaning now people start living in those areas. Everybody got me on that? Has anyone ever been up to Michigan? Any part of Michigan? It's a lot of factories, right? Yeah. It's a lot of factories. Now, now they also happen because of one of the great migrations as far as Ford Motor Ship, which we'll get to in a second, but it's a lot of factories because they can build things up there because you have all those canal waterways coming in as well. Especially when you get to New York City because New York City really starts booming because of this. Everybody follow? Y'all with me? All right, let's go ahead and rotate real quick. Let's get move around. Give me a second. This is just some pictures talking about these canals. Everybody stand up, move around. Let's keep moving through. Going on page two. Oh, man. The whole point of like me asking y'all to move around is not to be a total D, but to kind of make you just skin up moves, get a different vantage point, and it keeps your blood circulating. Not to mention, y'all know how it is. You sit in the classroom, you sit down for like an hour and a half, your legs gonna kind of get stiff. Everybody follow me on that? And the human body's not meant for it. That's why I have us move around. That's why I even do it too. And you know, that's just another thing that I should be looking at for grading too. All right. So let's keep talking. Let's go to page two now. Now we're gonna get into the railroads, all right? So now we are on, if you look here again, we're on, we on slide 16, I believe. Yep, slide 16. I'm gonna give y'all a second to just kind of fill in the notes and I'm gonna jump in, okay? And again, this is being recorded for your benefit to go back and look at. <sighs> Anna. I don't know they just want me to give it to you. So I don't know. I know more you know as about as much as I do on this one here. All right. So we're looking at this. Y'all ready? So we're looking at this. Um Yes, better roads aided transportation, but railroads proved to be the more durable and efficient uh, for moving goods and people. Is that what got me on that? Not only goods, but also people, because you know we need to have people moving around too, because that helps people work and things of that nature. So now I think you was talking about the railroads. Now we're getting into it, right? So they used watch steam technology to develop a steam what? Locomotive. That means it can move faster now. Is that what got me on that? Okay. In 1828, construction began on the first American Railroad in Maryland. Now, what was the connection line? From where to where? Huh? Baltimore to where? Ohio. To Ohio. So the first one was from Baltimore to Ohio line. Um, by 1840, there was more than what? 3,300 miles of track and many lines. Make a little side note on the side, Civil War. Does everybody got me on that? Because whoever controls these railroads is going to win the Civil War. We talk about that in a few weeks. Is everybody with me on that? Think about it. It makes sense, right? Transportation, right? You're moving goods and services. That helps that. You can move troops faster. You can move troops faster, everything. Okay? Y'all with me? All right. So let's go ahead and go to North. Now, because of this, we know we're moving so much. Now we got a more mobile society, right? Now, y'all know right now we are super mobile, aren't we? But this is the beginning. So this is a big deal back then. We kind of say, okay, you know, not such a big deal. 
today, but back then it's huge. So increased availability of uh, both goods and flow of information. Do I got me on that? So that means people wasn't so blind to what was going on in Georgia compared to what was going on in New York. People was more aware of it because people wasn't traveling. Do I got me on that? Think about this being, I'll make a side note, this being the first early internet. Is there a guy me on that? And when I say internet, I'm putting, let me make sure I'm clear this. When I say internet, I'm putting social media under the umbrella of internet because there'll be no social media without there being internet. Does that mean I make that connection? Y'all yeah. with me? All right, so white Americans can now pack, pack and up and move west. I specifically say white Americans because you still have slaves, right? Did they have, were they seen as people yet? So that we wasn't saying they can move. And in Native Americans, they're basically being pushed out, right? So I'm saying now white Americans are able to now pack up and move west. Move west means they get more land, more plantations, more money, more opportunity, more everything. Did I got me on that? Make a side note there, the three Gs. What's the three Gs, y'all? Yes, y'all know this. God, gold, and what? Glory. So that means they're able to push that. Also known as white man's burden. Is everybody clear there? White man's burden is saying the idea that, you know what, it is the burden of white Americans, and it's just white people in the world, to push the three Gs. Is that clear there? Not something that we necessarily want to do, but it's something that can definitely help us. So negative impact on Native Americans? Thank you. Huh? Is it, native, is it a negative impact on Native Americans? No, not a, um, so it had a negative impact on women and Native Americans. Oh. I was trying to get to that point. <laughs> because women are still, thank you for that, because women are basically still, okay, have kids, take care of the home, right? And of course, Native Americans, because you know, as you move west, you're taking away my land. Is that clear there? Y'all with me? Then of course, if everything is moving west, west, what else is gonna be extended west now? Not only just territory, but what else? Now states, but where are they moving west with them? It's a type of good. Slavery. Slavery is gonna be moving west. Does everybody make sense on that now? You really think somebody, you think a planner in Georgia is going to move west and to stop having slavery when they're making all this money? No, they're going to move their slavery with them. Or the system of slavery, that's how they're making their money. Is everybody with me? So slaves move west with their owners. Uh, major cause of death in Americans, uh, Native Americans are still today uh, with disease as white settlers. And then Life of the Western just becomes a lot different. So y'all, anybody ever saw an old Western? Yeah, it's a Western movie. This is kind of like, you look at that movie, this is what they're going through. Y'all with me? Any questions so far? All right. Give me a second. We'll do some skipping real quick. Now, I'm going to say this because there is some overlap where I'm not sure why Georgia did this, okay? They skipped the whole area. <laughs> is everybody got me on that? They didn't stay chronological. They just skipped this whole part, and they come back to when we talk about Civil War. So I'm kind of skipping some of that. I'll keep you all abreast of it. But right now, we're about to get into the case study of Lowell Mill. We're about to get there in a second, all right? But we talk about the, the pioneers, stuff like that. This would be more so something for my AP students. Um, you all won't see this on any test I make and definitely not on the EOC, I don't think either, based on where the standards are written. Is that right, there? All right. Um, uh, but the Native Americans are definitely forced west. So most, some sense for you know, most Indians were forced to move during this time and it was because of U.S. Um, treaties. They made some treaties with Native Americans, but more so it was kind of like, here's a treaty. You have no say on it, but it's a treaty, so do it. And we got guns, so you guess what you're going to do? Either move or die. Does that sound very fair? No, it wasn't fair at all. Um, and then while many fought to keep their culture, the Cherokee decided to adapt. And when I say adapt, I mean assimilate, meaning that you come more into the idea of Western America or the American ideals. Did I got me on that? Let go of the idea of being Native American, become us. You, you, assimilation is a way of survival. A lot of people do that even to this day. And I say this, and again, if you think about this, we always say, you know, we don't make a be a colorblind society. But when you apply for a job, you got to mark what your race is, don't you? So that way, is, that color by society is kind of a fallacy. More so, like when you come into school, if I follow me on this, our school demographics are always skewed. This is why. We have a very high, both black and Latin community in this school. Can we agree with that? If you look at the statistical data, it's not true. 
the reason why is because a lot of people and again you can do that and that's how you that's how you feel that's fine but when we talk about just look at the colors most our ratio is very high and then white is very high because a lot of those individuals might assimilate or call themselves being white because that's what they're used to do you see what got me on that but when you look in the school be like the white population is that high no it's really actually the Latin population that maybe checked the white mark you see what got me on that and again, that's fine until you start thinking about funding things like that make sense to everybody like that okay all right so the cherokee they chose to adopt a good adoption idea as you mean cherokee county right here north of us in georgia right they right everybody see that connection it's literally named after them um they even practiced slavery some cherokees did they fully assimilate into the american culture and the reason they assimilate is a way of survival how many y'all knew that i mean okay so let's go ahead and look at lowell mill now all right this is a picture of lowell mill Am I still sounding okay? It's a picture of Lowell Mill right here. Um, this is more pictures. This, I had a colleague that went up there, so I just kind of stole her pictures because like, I wasn't going up there. But, you know, it kind of gives you an idea of what it is. And then we talk about textiles, right? Did everybody with me on that? And again, the end of things you close, the thing we said earlier, textiles, things you wear, things you close, we all using this even to this day, right? Okay. All right, y'all kind of get the point. Yes? So when you see me have like 140 slides, look, that was just six slides of pictures, right? All right, so let's get into Lowell Mill. First off, the workers are mostly what, y'all? Women. Young women. You got to say that. Young, single women. That means they're not married, right? How many hours did they work? Uh, 13. 13 to 14 hours. Do y'all understand that? Y'all complain about being in school for seven hours. They won't work about 13 to 14 hour work days. What are you about to say? Yeah, you can buy all work for five hours. They do a 13 to 14. Look how much they're getting paid. How much they getting paid a week? Two dollars. Now, of course, that's not a lot back then, but it's definitely not a lot now, is it? But oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wait a second. Some of y'all get paid eight dollars and fifty cents. Y'all think y'all making some money? You ain't. That ain't no cash. I'm just saying. If you wasn't there with your mom and dad, and a parent, you wouldn't be living right now because you wouldn't have a house or a roof over your head. Um, what's the average temperature in these places? Because y'all assumed they had air conditioning, right? No, they didn't. Air conditioning wasn't developed yet. Mm. And y'all all know, how many of y'all ever cook something in the kitchen on the stove? Does it not warm up the house? Yeah. So you think these fact, these machines don't warm up the houses? Yeah, they are. So like 90 plus is what I'm saying. And it can be in the middle of the winter, 90 plus, okay? Oh, <sighs> what does that mean? Huh? What does that mean? I mean, brown lunch meaning you having whatever you can find in, the, in a brown bag. Oh. Okay. Um, scalp, if your hair got cut off, so that means all your hair is cut. So that means you learn to put it in the bun or not have it out. Does that got me on that? Y'all follow? Was this a very good situation? No. Uh, pretty much sucks. I definitely follow this information. Yeah, I would definitely put like um, cotton dust because, you know, that's the that's stuff coming from, the you know, the stuff they're making, right? Cotton dust. Y'all follow me on that? Did they protest? Protest? Who are you going to protest to? And then you get fired. And then you're not getting paid $2,000 no more. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm being, I'm not being facetious. I'm being honest. Yeah. 90. 90 degrees. <laughs> All right. So this is might be one of the reasons why unions got started. You know, I got me on that. Now keep in mind we live in Georgia. That's where I'm teaching this class at, right? It's not a union state. Most of y'all have no idea about unions. Some people might say this is woke um, education, but unions have both good and bad. But you know the good thing about it is that you can maybe stop this because <laughs> you know we don't work 13, 14 hour days for a reason no more. Well, some people don't. You know, I got me on that. Which I need to start getting overtime on oh, salary. That's how to get over that 13, 14. Your salary, they can work as much as they want you. You see what I'm saying? Hourly, you got to get paid what? Every hour. All right. All right. So you're making a lot of big profit. So now you use um, new inventions to make profit. You produce materials faster and also cheaper. All right. <coughs> So you use new inventions to produce materials faster and cheaper. Like the cotton well, not at the cotton gin yet. We're getting there though. Okay. We're about to get there, but you see it. 
Well, good job. Make that connection. Um, Industrial Revolution was an effort to increase what, y'all? Production. Production by using what? Machines. machines. Do we still use machines to make everything, y'all? Yeah. yeah. How many of y'all watch baseball? Like professional baseball? So y'all heard how they about to start having, they start, they don't implement machines as far as like the strike zone. So like everybody know what baseball is at least, right? Okay, so baseball, you know, the pitcher throws a, a ball, a ball to the hitter and they have like a little area which is supposed to be the strike zone, right? That's how you play the game. So now they're saying, now normally it's a human back there that says balls and strikes, okay? Now they say they're going to implement like a machine that's going to say what the balls and strikes are. That can be both a good and bad thing. When you think about it, if you ever play a video game, it does that already, doesn't it? But there's some things a computer ain't gonna see, <laughs> right? So you gotta think about it's always like a good or bad. All right. Y'all with me? Now, kind of like what Anna just said, we're about to start getting into different things. Um, so I'm gonna tell y'all something in a second. But how else are you? So you got beginning Braden, James Watson in the steam engine. These are the kind of things we just talked about, right? Review. We good? Y'all with me? Okay. Oh, click, oh. Now, Eli Whitney in the cotton gin. First thing I want y'all to do, y'all see where it says Eli Whitney 7? I mean, C? Draw error. This is not in unit 2. This is one of those things they skipped. I don't know why. It makes no sense. But they skipped it. So go ahead and put there, not in unit 2. This will be in unit 3. Is everybody clear there? So Eli Whitney is not in unit 2. For whatever reason, it's not in unit 2, but we're going to talk about it in unit 3. Is everybody got me on that? But it makes no sense for me to skip over it and come back to it. I'm going to just tell you about it now, okay? All right, so what did it? What did he create? The cotton gin, but he used the interchangeable parts. Okay, interchangeable parts is what builds everything for us. Is everybody with me on this? Like everything that we use is used by using an interchangeable part. So make sure you just follow me. I'm down at the very bottom. No, fill it in because you still gonna need to know it eventually. But I'm just telling you that it's not gonna be on unit two test. All right. So where all standard parts are made to and it, and what? Exact standard, meaning, so y'all know how y'all get a, how many of y'all ever put together a Lego or anything? So even a Lego, Lego is a very basic part of building. You notice how all the blocks are very specifically made to accomplish something, right? That's because of a machine like this. Before that little lopsided um, piece might mess up the whole build, right? So now everything is exactly the same for make a exact, so you think about a car, imagine like every car, Having this own okay before it get hit, it all looks exactly the same, right? That's because you have these interchangeable parts making everything as far as the materials the exact same. Does that make sense, everybody? So it's a huge deal. Okay. Now the interchangeable parts started with building the musket. A musket is a gun. Y'all do understand that, right? So bus musket is just the early uh, version of a gun, and then we moved on to the cotton gin. When cotton was developed. That was it for the United States economy. The Kanjian uh, really changed how things work. So we went from before the machine, it took as long as a long time to pick cotton. In 1793, one pound per day. Is everybody got me on that? In 1793, you had one pound per day, but because of a machine that does what? Yes, because now you have a machine that separates the seeds from raw cotton fibers. Y'all do understand, let me go back. Cotton is a plant. Y'all know what a rose is, right? Imagine a rose, but instead of having that little green, red thing on top, you have white stuff, which is cotton. When you touch that rose, you typically get picked, right? Yeah, the same thing with cotton. You touch the cotton, you're going to get picked. So that means that cotton's not going to get blood on it, but it's hard to pick. Do I got me on that? That's why it takes so long. The cotton gin now takes all those little picks things out that y'all never feel in your clothes out. Y'all with me so far? And then it allows you to now wear it. So because of the cotton gin, you now have it working that can clean how much? 1,000 1, pounds per day. Do y'all know how much that is? That's a benefit of you wearing these clothes. Does everybody got me on that? Do we still use cotton to this day? Yes, I mean, somebody's still picking out cotton. Cotton is a natural, yep. People, go down I-85 South. Once you get past New, you're gonna see a whole bunch of cotton fields will be cotton all over the railroad it's not, on a not a rainy day. Yes. People still pick it. People still pick them. Do you have some machine uses? Yeah, but again, cotton is very delicate too. 
You think I got me on that? All right. Y'all good? So now the effects of cotton. So nigga, this is the idea of what a cotton machine does before you can get a visual of it. Yes. Huh? I can't I can't see what you what do they call me? Number three. It started with cotton gin and then what? Start with muskets. I was talking about that's why I said guns. It started with muskets and then cotton gin was next. All right. So you see on the far left side you got the cotton balls, right? Did I clear on that? Then those seeds that you know that pick you and you know because plants got seeds in them, right? You have the machine that takes those seeds out. Now you got clean cotton. cotton. Now you can use that cotton and do whatever you want with it, right? We good? Okay. All right. So now what did it do? Number one, it did what? Profit of cotton skyrockets. That means more needs to be planted. Is that I got me on that? Supply demand. As we have more demand, we must equal that with higher supply. Is that right clear there? So profit of cotton skyrockets and more is planted. Exports rose to almost 6,000%. That's a lot. Is that right got me on that? America will kill to have this type of export right now. Is that right with me? Number two, many Southern, uh, southern, southern planters begin to depend on cotton as their what? On a major crop. They're not tripping on um, anything else now. They just want that cotton, which makes sense, right? Because the world wants cotton. Now, do you still have some people doing tobacco? Yes. Do you still have some people doing sugar? Yes. But everybody got some cotton on that field. Everybody clear? <coughs> Y'all still with me? All right, number three. Planters look for new what? Land. So remember that Western expansion? We about to go crazy on it now because now we need more land to build to make what? What we gotta have more of now? Cotton. Which means we have to have more slaves too. So yes, you're right. Which kind of gets to number four. More African slaves to keep up with the work on larger plantations. The slave plantation grew up to 1.5 million. That's the approximate number in 1820. Did I got me on that? Again, that's an approximate number. Which means it could be most likely a lot higher, maybe a little bit lower. Most likely higher though. Y'all with me? All right, go ahead and rotate, y'all. Oh. Even me just stand up, sit down, as long as I just see you moving, I'm happy. Er, should I say. All right, let's go ahead and get it. So James Madison, we're about to go to next, right? So kind of in a nutshell, um, it helped the Southern states gain more economic power, right? But keep this in mind, even though the South was making the cotton, the North was having all the factories, right? They were using it too. Let's make sure we be clear on that. Did I clap me on that? But also, um, there were fundamental differences because although the Northern states needed cotton, they didn't as much as the South did. Y'all follow me on that? But anybody see how this is gonna lead to the Civil War though? We are we kind of laying the groundwork for it, right? And unit three is Civil War, okay? Just getting your heads up. All right, so here's some uh, famous inventions during the time period. I'm gonna look at that for a second. <sighs> what is water power cotton process like your magic? Basically, it's like it's something that helps process the cotton and like you know with the the seeds and everything like that. All right, y'all good? Okay. All right, present number five. 
Who's this, who's this dude number five? James Monroe. James Monroe. Okay. All right. We're going to come back to James Monroe, but make sure you got the Missouri Compromise is made during the administration. So this is all stuff like, you know, really good, important stuff. But we're going to come back to him in a second, okay? Well, now we're going to focus on this dude named John Quincy Adams. Raise your hand if you don't know anything about John Quincy Adams. Okay? One person. Somebody heard the name. Okay, cool. He was the son of John Adams. So that's the first thing. He will later become president, but right now he's Monroe's Secretary of State. Everybody got me on that? So why is the Secretary of State important? Well, they mainly deal with a lot of matters, you know, close to home and also abroad. They pretty much the person that deals with, he's one of the major advisors to the presidency. Everybody got me on that? Like Secretary of State is an important job. Everybody clear there? Okay. Like I said, he's the son of John Adams, who was the second president of the United States. He was a guru for um, foreign affairs. What does that mean when I say he's a guru? What does that mean? Like he's heavily involved. Heavily involved, like really, really good at it, right? Yeah. Y'all with me on that? Like dude was like everything about foreign affairs. Y'all do know what foreign affairs are? Things not dealing with the United States. Everybody clear there? Everybody heard about the U Ukraine, right? That's a foreign affairs issue, okay? Um, so he he implemented the Adam Adams Onus Treaty, okay? That's where you, we got Spain to secede Florida, so now we got Florida. Is everybody got me on that? So this ha so what I'm trying to show y'all here is that John Quincy Adams did a lot of stuff, but Monroe got the credit because he's the president. Is everybody got me on that? And that's typically how it works. All right. You also we also got Oregon from Russia, okay. And then the Merle Doctrine. If you notice in your notes, I got the Merle Doctrine with stars by it, right? That means this is important. So make sure y'all hear me on this, okay? Merle Doctrine is key. Very, very, very important. All right. <coughs> Everybody with me so far? And give me a second. Yeah, you're still there. Just that I'm skipping some stuff. All right, so, so you had some problems, Monroe. That you had the Battle of Great Britain over the Great Lakes, and where we don't have the boundary with Canada. So you know the boundary we got right now? That was all decided during Monroe's presidency. Um, we still got issues with the Native Americans because we were taking their land. Let's be real about that. And then you had the uh, Convention of 1818, where U.S. ships could fish in Canadian waters. So that's like a treaty. Is it not a treaty, but like a peace deal to where we can still get fish out of like the Great Lakes. Do I got me on that? Um, <clears throat> you have problems with the Spanish uh, Florida. Again, that's, that was something that, that at the Adams, the Adams Owners Treaty helped fix. Um, you also had uh, Oregon, where Russia was claiming Alaska south of Oregon. But, you know, we already had a, we about to get Alaska, so we now get, we get Alaska a little bit. But now we got Oregon right now. So Russia agreed to withdraw from Oregon. They had too much land to govern anyway. Do I got me on that? Do I follow? So sometimes you know how y'all got when you was a kid you had a lot of toys right some of y'all and did you did you constantly kind of get rid of them as time went because you had too much right or you didn't use it no more that's kind of the same way that Russia did with their land it's all backgrounds of what I just told y'all everybody got me there but now let's get into this idea of the Merle Doctrine all right the idea was to we wanted to support Latin American countries everybody got me on that. And we also wanted to have in, have them have independence from Spain. We basically want to start getting Europe out of our backyard. Do I got me on that? The idea of the Merle Doctrine was to get Europe out of our backyard. And now what is said, is it right with me? <clears throat> so again, wanted to, to support Latin American countries wanting independence from Spain. So if these countries want to independent from Spain, like say Mexico anybody else, we're going to support that country to try to get their independence from Spain because it helps benefit us because now you have a European nation out of our backyard. Because then we already had all these issues with Russia and Canada, right? Our Great Britain. Y'all with me? I feel like this going to be a middle. It kind of is leading to it, but, you know, we're we, we getting there. All right. So what the Royal Adoption did, number one, the U.S. would what? 
not get involved in any international affairs of European countries. Nor will we take what? Sides. That means we're going to remain neutral. I'll put that word neutral next to it, okay? We're going to remain neutral. That's number one. Number two, the U.S. would what? Read number two. The U.S. would not what? The U.S. would recognize existing colonies and states and not what? Interfere with them, okay? So the U.S. would recognize existing colonies and states and not interfere with them. Number three, the U.S. would not permit any further colonization of the Western Hemisphere. In other words, if you're not already here, don't think about coming here. Talk about the Western Hemisphere. Is that right, clear there? Remember the transatlantic slave trade, right? Everybody was over here already. But we just saying nobody's coming in to get any extra land. Everybody with me on that? All right. Number four. Can somebody get that door for me? All right, number four. Any attempt by a European power to control any nation in the Western Hemisphere will be viewed as a what? Hostile, meaning an act of war against the United States. That's kind of what you talk about leading the war. If you try to come over here and take some land, we're about to go to war right now. Y'all with me on that? So basically, if you mess with the United States, excuse me, if you mess with Latin America, you mess with us, meaning United States. Is that clear there? That's what it said in a nutshell. Is that right clear there? Questions? Preguntas, questions? All right. So as far as your notes go now, let's go look at your notes real quick, right? Y'all with me? Okay. We got a lot of time. That's good. So let's look at what I covered with you all so far. Now, remember, um, on CTLS, you have the link directly there. Is everybody got me on that? And you also have the QR code. So we got a total of nine pages covered about four of those nine, right? Everybody clear there? Now, notice I say start on Prezi slide what? 57, right? Y'all got me there? Okay. But now I'm going to help you out a little bit. Y'all ready for this? You ready to get some little assistance? Okay. And if you haven't realized, I'm about to stop talking in a minute, aren't I? Because this is painful. But is this appreciative? Y'all good? This helpful? Yes, thank you. <coughs> You're welcome. All right. All right. So you got now, you got the North, you got the South. Remember, we setting up the Civil War. Is that right? I mean, so we're not looking at notes. I want y'all just kind of listen to me and follow along here with me, all right? So this is everything we talked about that's going on in the North. You already got notes on this. You should know this. I'm just kind of looking at it. Y'all go back and watch the video. Screenshot summary. Cool? Good. Keep going with my Kevin Hart. All right. Um, growth of cities. As cities grow, you will have problems, right? Do we not have problems in our city right now? Overpopulation, uh, which leads to homelessness, crime, blah, 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 right? Similar issues here. Poor police and fire systems, because you know what? They don't really have fire firefighters like we got right now. We kind of got a luxury of that. Is that clear there? Regardless of what you say about the police, they don't really have that either, which means people just constantly stealing. Is that got me on that? That's the kind of luxury we got now. Sewer systems. We don't think about the sewers until your toilet backs up. And then you're like, oh, shoot. Right? Let's go fix it. Then you think about sewer. Why you just go poops, flush, and you don't think about it. But sewers are huge. They didn't have that that much out back then. <laughs> Y'all see where that's a problem, too? And then also, you just got to think about um, diseases. Because of all these issues, all this waste, you just got disease. Everybody got me on that? So what we're going to have is something called social reform movements and eventually it's going to come up to try to help fix these things. So let's talk about cotton real quick again. When is this going to be important? Civil War. The Civil War, so next unit, right? But look at how much the southern states are throwing out cotton. Does everybody see that? Meaning like they're selling it. I'm just using it as a, um, a paraphrase, in it, but saying they sell it. Huge money profits, yes? They're, okay. the they're not giving it, selling it. They're selling. We ain't gonna don't ever give up nothing that you can sell. No, in other words, don't ever do nothing for free that you get paid to do, right? But they're selling a lot. <laughs> well, think about this. Economics one on one. You want to export more than that you import. So Great Britain, they can't they can't break make this because their economy they're not the economy, but their climate just doesn't allow it. So they spend a top dollar for this and they have no choice. And the main producer is the United States. So the United States is making money. Everybody clear there? Just want to make sure you know from there. 
all right? The slave system, guess what? You gotta have slavery to build cotton, right? So then you have, from 1830, you have about 3.7 million slaves in the United States. About, probably about 12% were free, but most were slaves. With no freedom in sight. Do I got me on that? Um, you have a very much an agrarian system, meaning everything is really produced by agriculture means. And that's the main way we made money down here in the South. Say that because y'all live here in Georgia. Y'all know this Georgia history, right? Uh, slaves were property, not people. You got to clear it on that, right? So it's a bad analogy with the truth. This is my property, right? I can do what I want to my property, right? I can throw it. I can break it. I can do whatever I want. That's how slaves were seen. Everybody got me on that. Bad analogy, but think about how many times y'all drop your phones. That's your property, right? That's how slaves were seen. We got to make sure you're clear on that. Legally, that's how they were seen. Um, by in the 1837, the price of a good slave was approximately $1,300. That's a lot of money, particularly back then. That ain't cheap right now. Everybody follow me on that? I'm not going to do, do the math for my calculation, but that's a lot of money for a good slave. And again, what you call a good slave, different definition, still a lot of money. All right. Um, now, you have the idea of a small plantation versus a large plantation. And again, depending on the size of the plantation, how good or bad that slave was treated. Bigger plantation, more production, right? Harsher work. Small uh, plantation, most likely less work, might not be as bad. But no matter you look at it, you can see this property still bad. Trying to set y'all up. Y'all with me so far? Okay. All right, so this is a uh, clip right here that I'm going to show y'all talk about slavery in America. Um, it works. Okay, I'm actually not going to show because I didn't think it was 28 minutes. <laughs> yeah, go and get the restroom. But I would definitely suggest that y'all go back into this Prezi, and I got the link there for you. It's 55 minutes. This kind of gives you a really good, clear visual of what it was like. Does everybody got me on that? Everybody clear there? Yeah. All right. Um, of course, these were slaves, uh, papers that you would see all across. Again, it was a very profitable system. Am I clear there? It was so possible that if you was a free slave, you still wasn't safe because you can be stolen and put back into forced slavery. Because again, so much money can be made off of this. Uh, 12 years of slavery is both a movie and a book. It's factual. That's what happened. Okay. But you guys can see that right there. Talk about how it was made. Um, be historically accurate saying Negro was, again, this is what they said. It wasn't Black folks or African Americans. It was considered Negro for a very long time period in the United States history. All right. Now, you did have a lot of slave revolts. Is that right with me on it so far? The most prominent slave revolt would be um, in Haiti, the Haitian Revolution. Does everybody remember that? Remember that one? So that's where you had the Haitians that overtook over, um, took the French that was led by Napoleon. That's a big deal. Now, the problem with that, that scared everybody else because how are you going to beat Napoleon? Do you got me on that? It made things in the United States harsh for those slaves because they heard about it. Like, no, y'all ain't doing this. Let's keep in mind. They were outnumbered. Talk about like white planters. They were outnumbered grossly because, again, they had so many slaves because they had to produce cotton, right? It wasn't even close to how outnumbered they were. But it's something about the psyche, right? You are many adults for all practical purposes, right? But you have a psyche that where you're just not going to do certain things because you've been kind of conditioned that way. Do I got me on that? I'm not saying it's the same condition as slavery, but it helps you kind of understand why they do some things, right? If you're like, well, why didn't you revolt? Okay, so why is it that Y'all still actually ask for a bathroom pass every time you go out. Now, I asked you to ask me because I want to make sure I know who you are because something happened, right? But college, you do know you don't ask for no bathroom passes, right? But you condition. Let me reiterate. I want you to ask me because I want to make sure that if something happens, she says she goes to the bathroom, I can tell your mama, act a shooter, I know where she went, right? But think about that. Does everybody got me on that? The fact that somebody can tell you no and you don't do nothing about it, that's a level of conditioning. Anyway, I will not say no unless you've been doing some crazy crap. Like, you know, you know, you got some people that go, they don't go to no bathroom. They do everything but the bathroom, right? Yeah, I ain't letting them go no more because you obviously not going. I need other people to actually go. But I'm just saying, the idea of conditioning. Is that clear there? Now, is some of a good thing? Yes, because it does keep you out of trouble. But I'm just trying to make sure you guys see this is a very horrible analogy, but whatever, we're going to keep rocking with it. Y'all good though, right? All right. <clears throat> so this is a good video talking about the crash course, about the Haitian Revolution, but we're going to go through that. And again, this is where you had like a massacre in Virginia. Does anybody know what this massacre was called? Who led this massacre? Anybody know about this? And now you're about to. Remember, I told y'all 
Or is it like the, uh, what's the John Brown? Not John Brown. Nat. That's your hint. Nat. Nat, Nat Turner's Rebellion. Oh, oh, oh. Do you see why you in history classes? <laughs> Nat Turner's Rebellion was that rebellion that happened right after the history of the revolution that scared everybody out their socks. Is everybody with me so far on this? Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Okay. Sure you with me? All right. So Nat Turner Rebellion. Nat Turner was a preacher, man. Is everybody with me on this so far? Now, if you guys look at your notes, you have a section that says slave revolts. Do you not? Y'all see that? And what have I been discussing for the last five minutes? Slave revolts. See that little part right there? It says provide a one sentence thesis about Nat Turner. Now, should you probably put some other kind of refer refer referral things in there? Maybe. But a thesis statement is just a topic and opinion. And I just want y'all to just kind of summarize what Nat Turner's rebellion was. So in a nutshell, Nat Turner was a 31-year-old reading black person slave. Does everybody got me on that? And the reason why he could read is because he's reading the Bible. That's okay. You're teaching other slaves religion. Here's the problem. He became so religious that he felt that he had a premonition from God that says, I got to revolt. Does everybody got me on that? Now, of course, Nat Turner knows what's going to happen, but then you have something called a eclipse. Everybody knows those don't happen every day, right? So what happens is that he looks at this eclipse like, oh, dang, this is God telling me what I need to do. And guess what he goes do? He revolts. That's, that's a nutshell of Nat Turner's rebellion. And of course, he killed a whole bunch of people. Did they catch him? Yes. And they killed him and made an example, and they got 10 times harder for every other black throughout the country because they did not want to have another Nat Turner. Did I got me on that? The laws got stricter. The ideas of runaways got harsher. Everything got worse because they did not want to have to see this happen again because he killed a whole bunch of people. Again, we're getting up to <coughs> the Civil War. Is that I got me on that? Like, oh, hold on one second. She had her hand up. They still wanted it because, again, that was a, again, think about it. People are very religious now, right? And you got some people that's so religious, they will not do or say or do something because they are religious, right? So they still want you to practice religion. Again, three Gs, God, God is one of them, right? So you still got to make sure you um, share your religion. They still did it, but the idea of who can read and not, it was questionable. It was harder because they was worried about, you know, what you would do. But again, they hung about 20 of those slaves, including Nat Turner. And everybody knew about it. Because remember, we talked about the textiles, right? So that was a huge thing. So I hope you got a good thesis there for y'all. Y'all with me? All right, here's a video on that Turner. Nat Turner's 1831 slave rebellion stuns the nation and pushes the South slave policing system to its limits. For white Virginians and white slaveholders across the South, it was uh, a shock. The paranoia shoots off a scale. 50 dead today, how many dead tomorrow? In Southampton County, Virginia, Nat Turner, an enslaved preacher, has his own interpretation of the Bible. He believes that God has chosen him to avenge the sins of slavery. As Turner makes his rounds preaching in the fields, he quietly enlists other slaves to his cause. For months, the men meet secretly, conspiring on the plans of their uprising. In the early morning hours of August 21st, 1831, Turner and his men launched one of the largest slave rebellions in American history. The rebels <coughs> move from home to home, killing every white person they meet. As they advance towards the nearby town of Jerusalem, more recruits join them. The local slave patrols have failed to uncover Turner's plot. So the militia is called out to track down and kill the rebels. For 36 hours, the rebellion rages on. Church bells ring out in distress. Rumors spread among whites that the whole southern slave population has finally exploded in revolt and that the British are invading to liberate the slaves. As panic swells, the United States government provides important military support. And that support is ensured by slaveholder power, 
don't forget that slavery is protected not only by the slaveholder, not, not only by the local militia or the state militia, but also by the full force of the military might of the United States of America. Except for that, slavery would not have been possible in the South. As the hunt for Nat Turner and his men continues, 800 U.S. troops join 2,000 local militiamen. Within a week, the rebellion is squashed. More than 50 rebels are captured. Nearly 60 white men, women, and children have been killed. The violence doesn't fully subside until Nat Turner is captured two months later on October 31st, not by a patrol or slave catcher, but by a farmer, by accident. Turner is tried, hanged, and skinned. In all, the state executes 55 black people for conspiring with Turner. The Turner Rebellion frightened whites literally out of their minds, and yet even that wasn't strong enough to provoke them to get rid of slavery as an institution. Because for slave owners, profit outweighs morality and their own safety. By 1830, nearly two million slaves are fueling the southern economy, and slaveholders aren't about to give up their free labor. And still... All right. We good? Okay, just trying to give you some background on that. All right, so now your notes are now officially at the Tempers Movement, yes? So, make a note of that. This is slide 64. Is everybody clear there? Is everybody got me there? All I need y'all to do is complete those couple pages on the Timorous movement. It goes all the way through the um, women's rights movement. Yes, ma'am. I'm about to talk about that right now. <laughs> we go to it here. Let's show it to you. All right. So what y'all going to do now is comp complete doing the Timorous movement, public um, education reform. Prison reform, abolition movement, and the women's right movement. Now, I gave you a lot of spaces there. And you're going to stop right there where you got Missouri Compromise 8 to 20. Do I got me on that? So this is where you all will stop at, right here. Do I see this little what I'm doing? That's where you stop at. Is that a whole lot? Not a whole lot, y'all. Okay. So you're going to do that portion right there. And again, y'all have access to this because all you have to do is NCTLS, the assignment is there with today's date. But also, you can scan the QR codes. I gave you a hard copies, right? Everybody got me on that? All right. So that part is going to be now due tomorrow. Everybody got me?